Okay, everyone, we are probably more than halfway to our destination. Yeah, for sure. And uh, if you guys saw my last video, that vehicle, that the tire was bouncing off the ground, and I hope that you had you seen it. I apologize that I didn't realize I was zoomed out, making me look gigantic, or maybe not even the picture at all. Um, how important it is, not only for a new vehicle, right? Once you buy a new vehicle, it's no longer new. It's newer. Uh, so there is a, an importance for both. One, a new vehicle, and for regular maintenance. Um, two, high mileage vehicles. Uh, and they could be newer high mileage vehicles, or it could be older uh, vehicles with low mileage. So either way, the importance, this is about the importance of it being in for regular inspections, not necessarily state inspections, which I think there is value depending on where you go and who's doing it. The value in a 300,000 mile, 25 year old vehicle, it's more important that you're in for regular inspections and maintenance um, than I would say it is for a current model year vehicle to be in for regular maintenance up to about 30,000 miles because that's just how I feel about new vehicles today is that they just deteriorate and decay so fast. Um, but more of an importance for a, a 10 year old car versus a one year old car. Um, and mileage and environment and usage and abuse and all this has factors in everything. But the manufacturers um, are duping the customers. And what are, what are they saying is, oh, you don't have to come in for every 3,000 miles for an oil change, right? This, this is what they're saying. Come in every 10,000 miles or 12,000 miles. So what are you doing to the maintenance of the vehicle and the inspection process? And the dealerships telling you to go. The dealerships are telling you to go, go 8, 10, 12,000 miles for an oil change. All right, so you're supposed to rotate your tires. Yeah. When? But your oil change. Wrong. Tires really haven't changed that much. Oh. Wrong. So many in the past, when you came in for an oil change, depending on your your uh, usage and abuse and conditions of the vehicle you're using it for, it be every other oil change. Okay, so 6,000 miles would be every other oil change under normal, normal conditions. So now, what are you doing to the vehicle? You're prolonging your inspections and repairs and maintenance. So tires haven't really changed much other than they are thinner on their tread. So long ago, they used to have tall treads and now they're sport tires for most vehicles, which is a shorter tread. So now, if you only rotate your tires three times based on a 10,000 mile OCI, right? Three. Yeah. Rotate. Depending on your driving habits, your tires could be garbage by the second rotation. 20,000 miles on a 40,000 mile tire is 50% of its life is gone. So this, we're just thinking. So the manufacturers and the dealerships and the dealer service writers and technicians are advising you every 10,000 miles bring your car eight to 10,000 miles to bring your car back in for maintenance. So you have zero mileage. They say, we'll see you uh, in 5,000 or 10,000. We're saying most of the people aren't coming in at 5,000 miles. We're saying they're coming in eight to 10, if not longer. Now that car, in my opinion, is already two OCIs out of where it should be and potentially two tire rotations out of where it should be. This is just the facts. Come in at 10,000 miles or 12,000 miles. Your tires should have been rotated at six, depending on your driving habits, right? And your alignment conditions and blah, 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 blah. So tires are still tires. Tire wear is still tire wear. The roads are still the roads. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so the dealerships are saying, do this. Well, if you take that, do this process, right? Past the warranty period, what do you have? You're, you'd be lucky to make it out of warranty and not need a set of tires. Wow. You'll be lucky to make it out of warranty and not consuming oil, which means you need an engine or engine repair. 
based on all their habits. So my thought is, all right, is it so bad to have your vehicle in every 3,000 miles for an oil change and a regular maintenance inspection? So once your vehicle's maintenanced up and everything's good, be it a newer vehicle or an older vehicle, now you're just keeping an eye on everything if you're in for regular routine maintenance. And if you take it to a scrub shop or a quick lube that doesn't have skilled guys or maybe your mechanic's really not the greatest mechanic, uh, <laughs> he's good for you because he's cheap or you know he's their neighbor on whatever the scenario is. Is he really putting your car up in the air if he's working on floor jacks? No. <laughs> or jack stands. These quick lube guys drive them over pits they're not really trained to to hear and feel front end noises and brake problems and shit like that. Uh, so a quick lube is not a real mechanic shop, just not. Uh, they are you are sell you everything under the sun maintenance maintenance place. Uh, so the right place, right, for the right service at the right price is kind of what I'm saying at the right time. So is it so bad to bring your vehicle in every 3,000 miles for top level guys to keep an eye on your investment? And it's it's equally important and not so equally important on a new car once you hit a certain amount of mileage in years. Uh, and what you benefit from this is you don't have something creeping up on you. And I'll give you it for an example. Like this car has 300,000 miles on it. We put new brake pads all the way around. We put new calipers all the way around. Because I had two pistons in the front wheel working out of four pistons. The other side, two pistons out of four pistons. A right rear caliper that was intermittently sticking. Um, and I didn't catch the, the front brakes, although I felt it had poor stopping power. And sometimes you just don't know if you put big wheels and tires on or if that's the way that it is. I kind of felt there was a mechanical problem and I, and I was 100% right. And I didn't even have to take the car apart to diagnose it. I kind of just knew that, hey, I could see and see the caliper in the back intermittently sticking. You would have I to could... really not know anything about a car. Well, hold on. I'm not finished. But I'm saying the if I didn't bring this car in every 3,000 miles at 300,000 miles, 300,000 miles and almost near 30 years old, me not bringing it in the shop every 10,000 miles, if, if I'm bringing it in the shop every 10,000 miles, how much more worn would my tires be? How many more things would be near the end of its useful life or coming about? And I'm, and I'm saying I'm a technician, an experienced technician, knowledgeable technician. If I just ignored those regiments of not being in at 3,000 miles, I wouldn't know that I had a CP rack and pinion, right? So if I just stretched my 3,000 mile oil change to 10,000 miles, right? What's gonna happen? Right, I already know it's seeping. Now I need to keep an eye on it and see if me adding my seal stopper that I make myself slows it down or stops it. The next part of this problem is if I would've went 10,000 miles, right? Knowing I already knew this car burned oil, how much oil is it really gonna burn if I'm not a, a, a savvy, vehicle owner that knows check the oil do this do that how much oil is left in my engine at 10,000 miles if it burns two quarts of oil out of six quarts in 3,000 miles well that's a catastrophic failure if you're you follow me or, or bearing failure or internal wear because of low oil so by me having it in a shop every 3,000 miles now I'm really in tune to the way that I drive this car the way that it's used the way that the manufacturer engineered it the way that it's wearing and weathering over its lifespan and it's really a test to how you're using that vehicle and how that vehicle is engineered and designed because not every vehicle is the same i can tell you this oil consumption is a plague because of the same practices that the dealership and manufacturers are putting on the consumer that's a fact yeah that's a fact so the point of the story is if I didn't keep an eye on this car every 3,000 miles, there could be catastrophic failure happening, and I don't even know it happening, or safety issues creeping up that are creeping up faster than I may be aware of. And you need someone to keep an eye on that. And staying out of the service center or the repair shop 
or a skilled mechanic is really uh, a value. Like if, if you're avoiding going to seeing a real mechanic, you're missing the value in that. If you're going to a quick loop, you're get, you're, you're 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 overpaying and not getting. Yeah. You're overpaying and not getting. You think that you went into the quick loop and they the mechanic is so lazy or the, the service writer is so lazy that he checked every box is green. Your tires have steel belts coming out of them. You have fluid leaking. Your filters are nasty. And on and on and on and on. And you're like, well, oh, I just left the quick loop. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. uh, or I went through New Jersey State Inspection and they gave me an inspection sticker. Even though I know my parking brake doesn't work. My turn signals don't work. My washers don't work. My brake lights are out. Uh, it's pissing fluid out of it. My front end's rattling. And I, and I can barely stop the car. Some but people it, don't know what a, a car should feel like. That's the truth. But they... But my car is okay. But my car is okay. Um, so yeah, even Are they burning it. No, that's just decaying. So uh, my point is, sticking to what the dealership regiments are, lets your vehicle get out of hand and neglected repairs and maintenance. And if you're going to a place that is a spill and fill, or they are the lug nut rotators, you know. Because we see them too. Like, oh, yeah. A normal person would go do a quick loop and get their oil changed. And, and if nothing is told to them, they're going to think that their vehicle is fine. Correct. And so a week later when they break down, they're going to be like, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> true. Well, this video is so important that there is value in being in your dealership. And if, 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 if they're a good dealership technician or a good dealership or a good mom and pop, uh, you know, I hear some customers say, hey, every time I go to this place, they find something wrong. That is their job. Right. Their job is to find things wrong with your car that you're not aware of, or maybe you are aware of, present the conditions, and present a solution. People say that about you, too. And I'm sure. And then if there's any maintenance that you missed, that is their job. Their job is to keep you on the road. There's so many... Uh, well, it's actually your regular customers will say it. Every time I come in here for one thing, you always find something else. That's, the, that's my job. Correct. You're not only here... For a tire plug, you're here for me to see if your vehicle is in good working order and safe, right? Yes. And I say this all the time to people. You come in for an oil change, and I say nothing, right? I say nothing. Your transmission's pissing transmission fluid out of it. Your differential's leaking gear oil, and you go down the street, and your vehicle locks up or your transmission neutrals out. You know what the first thing that they say, and this has happened to me before, when people say, well, I don't want you to look at anything, or I don't, I know there's things wrong with my car, and blah, 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 and they go down the street, they go to Wawa and shut their fucking car off and call me and say, what did you do to my car after my oil change? <laughs> you yeah. said don't look at anything. Yeah. <laughs> because the belt flew off. <laughs> right? The, the battery light was on, but you said it's been on for years. <laughs> right? So that's why we look at your car. Because you know how many people come in and call me a day or two, what did you do to my car after an oil change? My battery's dead. Well, did you leave the lights on? When's the last time you replaced your battery? That's why we check this shit. If your car has a slow crank or a weird noise, it's my job to bring it to your attention. Or how about you leave my shop for an oil change and you tell me you just want a quick oil change and nothing else and your tire blows out. Blows out. Right. I have people come in with lug nuts on backwards. Or one lug nut holding the wheel on because the wheel's so goddamn loose and all they want is an oil change. That's terrible. So, yes, you, you, the important. You hear that, like while you're driving. That's you normal. Oh, okay. That's normal because they got noise in the front and noise in the back. They think that that's normal. Oh, okay. Hand to God, honest truth. Why didn't you tell me about that when I was here? So now I tell everybody about everything while they're here. Right. Rather me tell you your transmission lines are leaking now and save your transmission, then you go home. And you start your car and put it in gear and call me and say, why is my car going in gear? Because you told me not to look at anything. Right. So I don't do that. We look at everything. And if I don't feel that the car is safe enough to bring it in and out of the shop, I just turn that oil change away. Right. Period. Or, or repair away. It doesn't matter. My job is to, to, to keep you on the road. My job is for when you go out to your vehicle that your car starts. So you can make it to work on time or you can make it to daycare. And that goes for all your technicians out there. We don't feel like some of us are doing our job. If we just do what you ask for, because if we do what you ask for, your car would fall to pieces. It would, just, it would disintegrate at your feet. Right. Our job is to keep you on the road, keep you safe, keep your loved ones safe, 
so you can make it to point A, point B, to make it to grandmom's house in California or wherever your adventures take you, that you don't come out to a flat tire or have it blow out driving down a road or front end parts falling off. And this is all from lack of being in and having your car inspected. And the, the more that you're in for maintenance, of course it costs more, but in the long run it saves you more. Hence, driving a 300,000 mile vehicle right here an hour and a half to Pennsylvania every weekend, sometimes twice a weekend. You're not taking some POS unmaintained vehicle on trips like this. You're not. You're not. So, you know, the importance of you being in the shop sooner than later, excuse me, is way important. Changing your mindset from being brainwashed at the dealerships to say, oh, well, your, your car is way better than what it was 20 years ago. Bullshit. I traded in a car that burned three quarts of oil in 3,000 miles to have a brand new car in three years burn three quarts of oil. Yeah. Because of how you told me to maintain it. Bullshit. My tires don't last long because you're telling me to come in every 10,000 miles for a tire rotation and oil change, which is wrong. And that's the truth. So, I want to hear the tires are different today. Yeah, there's less tread. That's how much different they are on a 300 horsepower vehicle that people are driving the snot out of more and more and more. Yeah. Right? You have more Uber and Lyft drivers. You have more taxi cab drivers. You have more uh, Uber Eats and what and, and DoorDash, DoorDash and, and delivery. There's more people driving the shit out of their cars today than there, there is ever on the roads. Yeah, there's just more lazy people than there is. Well, that, that's too, but the importance of them having strict guidelines for repairs and maintenance is, is you know, and there is none. There is no guidelines in New Jersey for those vehicles that are extreme abuse. They're, if they're not registered commercial, they get the pass. They can drive a death trap around and put passengers in it, and that's the truth. So, yes, the importance of being in the service center every 3,000 miles for maintenance, safety inspections, um, and just addressing the customer's original quest or need, and then say, hey, did you know your rear wiper blades peeling off? No. Did you know there was a tag light out? No. Did you know that your your sway bar links rattling? I heard something, but I wasn't sure what it was. You know what? You're, when you're going to hear it, when your wheel falls off, and then you have to have it towed to the shop. Yeah. And then it costs you to tow, and, and instead of one part, now it's five parts at five times the expense. So there is a, there's a value. And then getting someone like me to say, hey, you better stop changing your oil every three uh, every eight to 10,000 miles. And you need to start doing this where, hey, did you know, Mr. Customer, I pulled your oil stick for this oil change that you went 8,000 miles that, you know, Firestone or Jiffy Lube or the dealership said, and there's two quarts of oil left in your engine, and there's no oil leaks? Well, where did it go? It went out the tailpipe. <laughs> That's where it went. So now what do I do? Now I need to reel this customer in and say, hmm, we need to get an accurate gauge on the oil change. So write a prescription for 3,000 miles and then come back and let us check your oil at 3,000 miles, not five or eight, which people still do. And then we have, you know, then we have the case study going that, all right, we have a problem, we need to address it because it's only going to get worse. Oh, how cute. Oh, it's a baby. And, uh, and then reel them in every 3,000, every 3,000, every 3,000. And then make the recommendation on the corrections to try to save that engine and keep that beautiful car that has nice interior and nice body or, or even if it's beat up and banged up you know it still runs and moves on the road for that customer without a car payment you know and, move, and then we make the right recommendations like all right i'm here for just for an oil change okay you know your car's burning two quarts, quarts of oil in five thousand miles or eight thousand miles no you don't know you know why because no one stop no one checks their oil you're not going to get anybody at a gas station who pumps gas to pop your hood and even remotely come close to knowing how to check your oil never going to happen it's because you had real people yeah. in the service centers. Now, at the gas stations, if you can get the mechanic to walk out of his bay and check your oil, pff, I doubt it. Yeah. Even if he had nothing to do, I, I don't think he would do it. I don't think so either. So the importance of you getting your car in sooner is so much more valuable to you uh, in the long run. Um, and then you can just step away from the bad brainwashing habits that all these dealerships and manufacturers. Oh, look at this guy. It's Cujo. That doesn't um, damn it, I got distracted. If 
by Cujo. Point is, every 3,000 miles is better than 10,000 miles anytime. Thanks for watching.